Hi everyone, welcome to the joy of botany, especially plant physiology. Let me introduce myself. I am Kiran. I am a 5 year integrated BSMS student of ISOC Thiruvananthapuram. I found this is a great opportunity to talk to you about some concepts in the plant physiology. Thanks to you guys for that. Without a further ado, let's begin. Transport across the membrane. Today, I will be discussing the concepts of transport of ion across the cell membrane. The cell membrane is the most dynamic barrier of the cell. It is a living membrane, at the same time it is selectively permeable. It is formed of two phospholipid bilayer and specific types of proteins which may be surface proteins, integral proteins. Now basically the channels are mostly formed of integral proteins and they are of unique types. This lecture will discuss different types of channel proteins and how they are classified or the basis of their classification. At the same time, I shall also be discussing various means by which ions are transported across the cell membrane. To start with, there are two types of proteins present in the particular cell membrane. They are ionophoric proteins and ion channels. Of course, both are proteins, but the basic difference is that when we talk about ionophoric proteins, it receives the ions on the surface, then it actually shows a movement from outside to inside and the ion is released inside the cell. So this is the basic nature of the ionophoric protein, but the ions along with the proteins moving across the breadth of the cell membrane. But when I am talking about ion channels, there are a different mode altogether. They are built in inside the cell membrane from outside to inside. And there are specific ways by which different types of ions like sodium ions, calcium ions, protons, chloride ions, they are moving. When the movement takes place, there is no displacement of proteins. So the membrane remains intact, but the ions show selective movement across the cell membrane. Now the salient features of ion channels are the rate of ion transport through the channel is very high. That is around 10 to the power 6 ions may be transported per second, which is pretty high. And the ions pass through the channels down their electrochemical gradient that is from higher to lower. And when they are moving from higher to lower, they are actually following the concentration gradient. So there is no energy involved, but when they are moving against the gradient, there should be some energy involved and this energy comes from ATP. At the same time, there may be some specific means by which both the protein or sugar along with the ion moving across the membrane and this mechanism is called the core transport. Classification of channels on the basis of gates. The first type will be the voltage gated sodium channel or voltage gated channel. These channels are represented by a specific protein with a specific outer component and inner component and at the same time there is a particular voltage sensing alpha helix in there and there is also a channel inactivating segment on the lower side that is on the cytosol side. What happens is when the particular sodium ion is present more outside it has to come in and create a concentration gradient and this particular condition is called the polarized state. So what happens is Whenever the sodium ion is moving inside, it is called depolarization and this depolarization may occur in around 0.1 millisecond and whenever this particular movement takes place, sodium ions move in and the alpha helix is opening the channel and the channel inactivating component remains inactive and after the sodium ions have moved in, there will be a positive gradient in inside the surface and the channel become inactivated or it closes. This way, selectively, sodium ions are moving in and out of the channel, which is controlled by the voltage. The next one is the voltage gated potassium channel. In this particular case, originally, when it is closed, it is in a polarized state. It becomes depolarized by the same way that is minus 70 millivolt is the resting potential. It will come to plus 30 millivolt when the channel open and at this point of time, potassium ion will move out and the channel will close again. So this movement from minus 70 to plus 30 millivolt and again plus 30 to minus 70 millivolt will continue. So the phenomenon is polarization, depolarization and repolarization by which the ions are moving in and out of the cell membrane. Please keep in mind that when I am talking about the cell membrane, it is informed for plants, animals and every living membrane. Next, I will talk about the voltage gated calcium channel. It is also a relatively complex type of channel where there will be an alpha segment, beta segment, gamma segment and delta segment. Four segments are there of which alpha 1 is the most important component and it is formed of four subunits 
and the first subunit is formed of six further units. So that is the most important channel through which ions moving. Along with that, there will be a side chain built inside the membrane, which is the gamma and the delta. And at the same time, there will be other alpha 2 and beta segments respectively outside and inside of the membrane. So this is a really very intricate, actually helps in selective absorption of calcium ion inside the cell. Next is hyperpolarization activated cyclic nucleotide gated channels. Here also there will be the central channel with the S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 subunits and the S4 subunit is actually the operating channel. The only difference is that in this particular case sodium or potassium ion move in or out with the help of some particular nucleotide like cyclic AMB or cyclic GMB which will facilitate the opening and closing of the ionic channel. Next is the voltage gated proton channel. This particular channel is actually a uniform channel having four outer components and four inner components. And this entire channel is actually having inner core through which the pore is occurring and that helps in uniform movement of proton or H plus ions. And it is normally in one direction so it is also called uniport. Now let me talk about another type of channel which is called ligand gated ion channel. Now what are ligands? Ligands are specific compounds which will bind with that particular channel and that makes the channel active. So whenever that particular component is not binding, the channel remains inactive. We can also consider some special type of channel. One of them is the inward rectifier potassium channel. It is so called because there will be a particular chemical substance which will bind to a particular receptor and because of that there is a change in the inner surface and thereby the particular ionic channel close to it become active. In this particular case, acetylcholine which is a common chemical compound will bind with M2 receptor as a result of which the alpha component is separated from the beta and gamma component and that will bind with the specific potassium channel making it active. And whenever the channel that is a KACH is active, it will not only allow the outward movement of potassium but will also facilitate movement of other compounds like polyamines or magnesium etc. So what I am trying to say is that the channel is activated by a specific receptor which is in turn is activated by a chemical compound which is a sort of chain process by which this ionic movement takes place. We come to another type of special channel called calcium activated potassium channel. So originally it is a potassium channel having S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6 subunits. Between S5 and S6 subunits which is built in inside the membrane there is RCK1 and RCK2 side chains and this particular RCK2 has got a specific receptor which will bind with calcium and the moment it binds with calcium the channel becomes active and it will allow the movement of potassium ions from inside to outside of the cell. Another very interesting special type of membrane is called tandem pore potassium channel. Now this particular potassium channel is having an alpha subunit where there are four transmembrane domains and this four transmembrane domain is having two pore forming loop P1 and P2 which is arranged in a chain and this outer surface is having a tetramer, inner surface is also having a tetramer. So basically this channel will only become functional whenever the two alpha subunits are joined and they help in the movement of potassium ions from inside to outside of the cell. Another interesting channel is the CMG channel or cyclic nucleotide gated channel. This particular channel is also having four subunits with the common pore but the difference is that each of the subunit is binding with a cyclic nucleotide like CAMB or CGMB and this particular alpha subunit is also having specific hydrophobic cylinder and the S4 segment is having a voltage sensor and this voltage sensor will allow voltage dependent transport of ion between S5 and S6 and this cyclic nucleotide binding domain is normally in the C terminal end of this particular protein channel. So this was the different type of channel proteins on the basis of voltage or on the basis of the ligand. Classification on the basis of ions. We can also classify the ion channels on the basis of the ions they allow. And in this particular case, we will talk about the different types of ion channels like potassium channel, sodium channel, etc. Let us consider the potassium channel like KCSA. The KCSA is having specific outer and inner core. 
the outer and inner core is actually oriented in a V shape which whenever it's activated become parallel and it will allow the linear flow of potassium ions and that also occur between S2 and S4 subunits in this particular channel. In the same way we can talk about the sodium channel which is also funnel shaped channel and having specific subunits like the extracellular funnel on the outside there will be intermediate filter, the central cavity and the activation gate. Here also there are two P and P2 alpha helices which is acting as a selective filter allowing the selective movement of sodium channel or sodium ion into the vestibule and the vestibule is interconnected from the outside to the inside of the cell. And the third one which I already discussed is the calcium channel. When the calcium channel is formed of alpha 1, beta, alpha 2, gamma and delta subunits where the gamma and delta are the side chain and the central core is formed of alpha 1 and that is formed of D1, D2, D3 and D4 subunits. And there is a central pore which will allow the movement of the calcium ion. So these are the major types of ionic channels on the basis of ions they allow. Classification on the basis of localization on the cell. Now let us talk about ionic channels based on their location. Ionic channels are mostly present on the cell membrane but as a matter of fact that internal organelles are produced by the invagination of the membrane so these particular channels are also present in organelles like mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum etc. One such channel present on the cell membrane is the chloride channel and this particular chloride channel is also having the N domain and the C domain as the side chains. But the entire long protein is actually a zigzag pattern with A, B, C, D and so on to R. So many subunits are present in two different domains of which intermediate subunit J is the longest subunit and others are arranged in a zigzag pattern and thereby they are helping in the movement of chloride ion along this particular channel. There is also a unique type of channel present in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum and they are called trimeric intracellular cation channel. Here I am talking about calcium. When the calcium ion is moving in or moving out of the endoplasmic reticulum, it is mostly helped by RYR and IP3R membrane channels. And this particular movement of calcium ion is facilitated by localized concentration gradient of the proton. Proton gradient will be established on one side of the ER membrane and that will allow the movement of calcium ion in and out of the endoplasmic reticulum. Mechanism of ionic transport. Now let us discuss the mechanism by which the ionic transport takes place. So let us discuss the first one that is facilitated diffusion. What is diffusion? It is the movement of ion from higher to lower concentration. And the facilitated diffusion is something where there is a specific channel like ionophoric protein which will receive the ion, take the ion across the membrane, release outside or inside and this particular movement is brought about by ATP. We also have that direct active transport. Direct active transport is something ideally observed in sodium potassium channel. In the first step there is a transport of protein which will bind with three sodium ions and movement of the channel is shown. Then it is actually is in opposite direction where the sodium ions will move out and the potassium ions enter. Two potassium ions will bind then again when it just goes back. It's just like a gate the potassium ions will move in. And this way sodium and potassium ions are moving outside and inside of the cell membrane through this particular sodium potassium ATPase pump. Because the energy for this movement is provided by ATP. So there are specific functions of the sodium potassium ion channel. One important function is it is maintaining a continuous concentration gradient. It is thereby helping in the movement of stimuli particularly in neuron. And at the same time they are also activating different other proton channel or other proton pump. One such pump is H plus K plus ATPS pump. This H plus K plus ATPS pump is also having three different domains. Inside the cytoplasm there is a projection on the membrane and there is a central part and inside there is a root. Ideally this is observed in animal cells which is helping in the continuous flow of H plus ions and that will create the formation of hydrochloric acid because in the same way there will be chloride ions which will move inside the particular lumen of stomach producing HCl. So thereby we know the stomach is acidic in nature. The next one is calcium ATPase channel. This particular channel will also have a cytoplasmic component and the membrane component. 
There are three cytoplasmic domains which include A, N and P and the alpha helices of the A domain is the most important which is having A1, A2 and A3 subunits. The transmembrane domain is also having 10 subunits M1 to M10. The M1 is amphiphatic in nature and it is the most important part because this is the region where the ATP is binding and the energy for the movement of calcium ion is provided. The next type of transporter is ABC transporter protein that is the ATP binding cassette is a specific type of channel where the channel will operate with a particular protein and it will open with the help of ATP. Basically this particular channel will operate in this way that the channel will open only when the ATP is giving energy. There is a specific ionic transport domain and the ATP binding domain. There are three different types of ATP binding cassette. This is ABC importer type 1 that includes in the transport of sugar, ions, amino acid present in the plant and animals. The type 2 is somewhat cylindrical which is also called ABC importer. Still it helps in the transport of vitamins and siderophore, particularly ion transport. And the third one is a unique type that only allows the export of ions from inside to outside. So because of this compact nature, the ATP binding cassette is a unique type of membrane in the plant system. Indirect active transport. Why it is called indirect? Because the direct movement of ion will not take place. There will be some kind of outer binding, transport and inner release. Ideally, this type of transport is seen in sodium sugar co-transporter occurring in the small intestines inner epithelium where sugar and sodium ion will bind with a particular transport protein and they both are released in the epithelial cells of the intestinal wall and finally the sodium ions will move out in a separate channel and that will be exchanged by potassium ions where three sodium going in and two potassium coming out but the sugar in the form of glucose is released through a separate channel. So what I am saying is that initially sodium and potassium move together but as they move in they have their own ways to be released into the cell. So that's why it is called core transport or symport mechanism. Next one is unique. It is called sodium iodide transporter. It is also a symport mechanism where there will be the iodine and the sodium ion together will combine and move. Finally they will be released separately. And this is ideally seen in the thyroid gland where the iodine is taken in to produce the iodine related hormone thyroxine. A unique type of transporter present in bacteria called permease transporter. What is permease transporter? There will be a specific channel on the bacterial membrane that allows the movement of lactose and an enzyme called galactosidase permease. Whenever they are active, this galactosidase will be active inside the cell and release glucose and galactose separately, which will be used separately in the bacterial cell. Another type of movement where I have already told you when a particular calcium ion is moving out there will be sodium ion moving in and potassium ion moving out. So it is an antiport system which is also called sodium potassium antiport or sodium calcium antiport mechanism. Diseases associated with ionic channels. When I am talking about different ions moving in and out of the membrane there will be some problem if there are any irregularities of this protein. So, we will now discuss the diseases associated with ionic channels. And one such disease is cystic fibrosis. This particular disease affects multiple organs, but in this case, we can talk about the specific cross section of the longus normal airway. What happens is for a normal airway passage, the channel is smooth, so lots of air moves in. And whenever there is cystic fibrosis, there is a particular CFTR channel which will not allow the movement of chloride ion. As a result, there will be a thick mucus develop on the inner channel or the inner airway resulting from which the normal airflow is stopped. So, in this particular lecture, we have actually discussed about the membrane channels, different channel proteins, how they are classified and how this mechanism of ion movement is carried out. That's all for today's lecture. We will definitely continue with very interesting and exciting concepts in the topic plant physiology. I wish you a good day. Thank you.